This is the Fairfield County Infirmary, known as a poor farm. It was a place for the less fortunate, a place for those without a home, and where people were admitted for physical or mental health issues. It held those with disabilities who were sick, too old to care for themselves, or even children who were orphaned. The first wooden structure to provide this care was erected in Lancaster, Ohio in 1828, but was eventually replaced with a brick building in 1840. Many passed through the infirmary, with some spending their whole lives here, and plenty passed away within the building. Mix the death, trauma and mistreatment of being housed in this building, and you have a recipe for hauntings. I've been with the building now two years and I've done numerous investigations. I actually just investigated with a team last uh, Thursday and we were hearing footsteps, voices. I've had a loud metallic bang happen while giving a flashlight tour. I've been touched. We've heard a growl, which usually the growl comes from a guy named Nuisance. If he didn't get five pounds of beef at every meal, they he would growl at the staff. We hear footsteps, we've heard voices, we've seen shadows. We just can't explain some of the stuff away. Other than that, it's just been shadow play. A lot of shadow play happens within the building. So that's why we feel it's very haunted. Uh, we also have a natural spring that's run, running right underneath the building. So we attribute some of that to the haunting as well. Pretty much this entire building, there's no real hot spot. It's the entire building has the same activity. A couple of them that we do know uh, is possibly Jane Householder. She was a woman who died here by um, being engulfed into flames. A fire had happened and it kicked back on her dress and she ended up passing away here after nine hours of dealing with the pain. A couple other people have said that there is a boy named Willie. They say he usually is here on the second floor and sometimes up on the third floor. Tonight, we will investigate numerous areas of this building known to be haunted. The lower levels where the former morgue sits, the hallways and rooms where unfortunate souls once lived, including a jail-like cell where those to misbehave would be locked, and of course the building's attic, which is sometimes referred to as the dungeon, as people are often chained to the walls here as punishment. It is time to start the walkthrough. This place is eerie. I've got two cameras rolling just because I've heard so much happens here. A lot of it is visual as well. People see shadow figures, people see apparitions. Even just earlier up on the second floor, Jared 40 saw something. Uh, we did a walk through for my patrons and YouTube members. It wasn't like a person though, was it Jared? No, it was sort of like a animal or something, like a, like a little fur baby, like a little cat or something, like on the floor. There was nothing there, so that was in the corner of my eye, so that was weird. I have no idea if there are animal ghosts here. It is curious that you would see something like that. It's odd, but there are so many odd things that happen here. So let's just roll ghost tube. I'm going to walk you through just two levels of this place, guys, and then Jared and I are going to split up and take the other two levels, which are the scariest places, Jared. <laughs> I'm actually like, maybe I don't want to do that, but maybe I do. Well, she was saying before she's going to send me into the basement and that freaks me out a bit because down there is where the morgue is. So yeah, I'm petrified. It wouldn't be the first morgue I've gone into, but they're never pleasant. Did you just make a noise or something? <sighs> no. I thought I heard something. Footsteps apparently is super common, and that's what I'm listening out for tonight. Is this an original hospital bed? This is, yes. Wow. So this was a hospital? Is that what an infirmary is? It was a hospital, but it was also what they called a poor farm. So literally this was where people who had uh, physical or mental disabilities were sent, people who were homeless, people who had addiction issues, uh, people who were orphaned, people who were elderly. It was kind of just the people who fell through the cracks of society were sent here a lot of the times. It's a long time ago. It was a long time ago now. This place Stop. is- Stop. I am going to say something that I'm just thinking in my head, okay? One of the main ghost stories here, right, is there was a lot of mistreatment. 
there was a superintendent here who kind of oversaw the place and wasn't the nicest fella and it's speculated that he's still here today like he, he his spirit lingers right and he's keeping all of the other spirits in line and does not like them to talk does not like them to communicate with the investigators is superintendent hummel he was not a very nice superintendent so we feel like he tries to still wrangle the spirits in and keep them in his charge so yeah it's sort of weird. so it's like a long time ago it was like someone was trying to communicate with us and then someone else came in and was like stop you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, could that have been the superintendent, maybe? So if there is somebody here, or oh, there's lots of lots of you here. My name's Amy, and this is Jared. We have good in, we have good intentions. We come here with the greatest of respect, and we would love to talk to anybody. If there is somebody here stopping you from talking to us, screw that. Like, come and talk to us. Don't let anyone boss you around. Don't let them tell you what to do. I don't think that's very fair. They're not in charge of you anymore. So you can come out and talk to us. Is there anybody home? Are there like child spirits here too? Cause there's like a teddy bear just here. And I swear I saw some toys earlier today as well. There are said to be children here, yes. As I mentioned, like a lot of children came here as orphans. Quite sad. Some people live their whole lives here. They died here, you know. Um, they definitely have activity that is childlike. A little girl has been seen here. Some people claim her name to be Susie, but they do have some rooms specifically set up for children that are said to be very, very active. Now those rooms were actually set up as like day room areas, but we set it up as a kids' room so that the children's spirits here could have a place to play. And that can actually get particularly active, um, especially that hallway. A lot of footsteps, noises. I've had REM pods drain in that hallway. I had a laser grid, one of the GS2 laser grids, just go nuts because of the proximity sensor that's inside of it. So that hallway is very, very active. Oh my god. So you're saying, are there kids here? This is one of the kids' rooms. There are so many dolls in here. Yeah, these dolls are sort of creepy. And I love that enormous one right near you. <laughs> what, this one here? Yeah. Yeah. This one looks like it's got a wig like the um, captains in parts of the Caribbean. <laughs> That's random. <laughs> And this one here sort of looks like she's from like Sister Act or something. Our guide today was saying that um, this dog got shipped here from one of the other venues that the, the ghost tour company that operates this place runs because it was causing some trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Young. Young. <gasps> Young, we're in the kids' room. Yes. Yes. <gasps> Hello, if there's somebody here, my name's Amy, this is Jared, and we've come here to play with you tonight. How old are you? Can you tell us how old you are? I can't believe that just said young and we're in the kids' room. L literally, yeah. I was told, guys, that this wasn't, didn't used to be a kids' room. They've set it up as a kids' room now for the child spirits that are said to be here to, to hang out, but... Yeah, that's, that's really crazy. I think it's so nice that they gave the child spirits here a place that they can come, you know. This is for them. All the toys. Did you just get a magnetic spike? Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hallway. <gasps> no! Yes! Let me try and replicate the magnetic spike. It did not go off again. Okay, so you want us in the hallway. You got us in the hallway. I did just hear a tap down there, thank you. Can you make a louder noise for us? It 
could be the other hallway where we were going. We were about to walk into the men's section. Well, yeah, I mean, this place has so many hallways. There's like one there, one there, one down here. Which hallway? Go into the men's area. Again, a lot of shadows have been seen down here. Upstairs on the third floor, that whole hall can be extremely active with shadow play, especially um, when you're standing beside the jail cell and looking down the hall, you can see it just dart in and out from each room. It's really got a smell down here, like... Guilt. Guilt. What do you have a guilt over? My name's Amy and this is Jared. So were these like cells and... Not. These were not cells. They weren't? Did I just answer my question? <laughs> yeah. What the hell is with this thing tonight? This is pretty good. Bribed. Guilt bribed. Not. These were more rooms where people would live rather than cells, but there were cells here and I will be taking you, I think it's the next floor up. Maybe we go straight there to the cell. I want to show you guys that because it's so uncanny that you are asking if these were cells and it says not but there is a room that is specifically a cell. It's so eerie how there's just old pieces of medical equipment like a walker or a wheelchair just laying around. Anyone around that wants to come out and say hi? My name's Jared. I mean, <laughs> my name's Amy, this guy's Jared. Hey. My hair or his hair? You can play with it, either one of the hairs. <laughs> I don't know if people get their hair touched in here, but. You wanna play with my hair? It's okay. Actually, we're in the men's wing, so. Ew. A bit creepy. Yeah, <laughs> not you. <laughs> so guys, this is just hallway Man. after hallway. Men. Maybe what? once your hair. You were like, my hair or his hair, and then it just said... Man. Man. <laughs> oh. That is... Okay, no, 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 I'm not going in that men's ward anymore. I think that, that now is my new favourite, least favourite spot, if you know what I mean. The men want to play with Jared's hair. Oh, that's <laughs> creepy. Nine! Nine men! <laughs> I don't know how that makes me feel. Well, you know what? Let's walk towards the cell because it's on this, this area. I thought I just heard something in the males. Like what? Ward then. Just something moving there then. Like what though? I don't know. I'm hearing noises in there. The man is back. Just stand still for a sec. Don't leave. <gasps> Oh my god! They really like you, Jared. They <laughs> Get me. So, oh, I don't want to stay here. I don't want to stay here. It's right as we're like going towards the exit. It says that. Why? It's okay. We're here to make friends. Anyway, we're lovely people. Can you give us a, uh, the number of your room? It did say nine before. Nine, through five, through six. Uh, through four, so it must be on the- On the lady's side? Yeah. Let's go, do you want to go to that? Yeah, let's go 309, let's see. If so I think 309 is just outside. I know it doesn't want us to leave the ward, but I really want to find this room. 307, 308, 309. Go in. <gasps> Is this a double pane mirror? mirror where they see through one side and you can't see through the other side? It's weird that it would tell us to go in that room though because, okay, we established it was a window, not a double. Mirror. Way mirror. But that's the only room that I know of that has that in it, which is weird. I don't actually know why they have that. Anyway, back on track, let's get to the cell. 
which is here. When you're sitting inside of the jail cell, there's usually a lot of footsteps happening. Um, if you're using spirit boxes, the spirit box will just be non-stop. You'll hear voices. Most of the time though, they don't answer your questions. They're actually just sitting and talking to each other through the spirit box because I guess they feel like it's a better way to communicate for, with each other. Cell is basically where they put anyone who was not behaving and they would cram multiple people in here. Now, if a you got put in the cell, wasn't a good place to be, but if you continuously acted up, you were sent somewhere worse, which we will be showing you when we split up. But this door here, we definitely left closed and it's still closed, so I'm making note of that. This door is kind of infamous from Destination Fear. Let's open it. If anyone's watched that TV show, they came here in their first season and this door opened twice on its own and it was caught on camera both of those times. And it's weird that it's, yeah, the prison door the, or the prison cell door. And we can also confirm that. Father. Interesting. I'm just going to put, goes to Gerald. Gerald. Oh my God. Is that referring to, okay guys, so my name is Jared, of course, but Amy, has a nickname for me. She calls me Gerald for some reason. So that's actually quite weird that that would come up. So Gerald is kind of relevant to us. That's literally my nickname for Jared because I never, like when I slur Jared, it kind of sounds like Gerald. So one day Lord. I just started calling him Gerald. Lord, a couple of religious words coming out. But I mean, father, Gerald, maybe it's relevant to this actual location, you know what I mean? They did say that they had a, um, maybe a chapel in the lower levels, didn't they? So, yes. could be. So anyways, guys, this is in the inside of the cell. You can see a lot of investigators come here. There's a lot of offerings on the table from toys for children, uh, candies. Then you've got more adult things like cigarettes and money, so. That is a lot of money. <laughs> I counted it today, there's $28 there, but it looks like a lot. Count. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I counted it, yes, it's $28. What the hell? Okay, I will admit, I counted the notes, I didn't count the coins. There's $28 there. That's so weird that it says count. Should I count it again, just in case it's like, there's money missing? Um, you better not steal from the spirits. I'm not going they to. They will be vengeful and follow you home. If anything, I'm going to leave more money there. Hang on, let me just sit down. Do you actually have any money, Jared? <laughs> Let's <Not>, be real. <laughs> not on my person, but I do downstairs. What we would love for you to do tonight is move this door. Slam it, swing it, open it, close it. Do something with this door, please. You guys are my witness. I am closing this door. Oh. Okay, that's as closed as it gets. Maybe because this area is of interest and we're about to split up and move to different areas. Let's go get Ghost Tube SLS and rig it up right here. Cause I really want this door to open for us. <laughs> That was crazy already. <laughs> that was such a good walkthrough. Yeah. And we've only covered like half this place, guys. Like, it is massive. That's not even, yeah, that's not even the full walkthrough. We are going to the two, probably the scariest places now. What, you said you want a morgue. Yeah, I mean, I know normally, guys, I hate doing the creepy place, but seriously, out of the morgue downstairs in the basement and the dungeon upstairs in the attic, like, they're both scary spots. Like, I don't know which of the two I'd rather. <laughs> they're both not ideal. I would rather the morgue, but on this trip, I'm just pushing my limits. I'm just going to the places that freak me out the most, which is the attic. In the day when I was up there, I could hear voices in my ears. I, I was so already like- And I thought I heard a noise there. up there too. I'm pretty sure while I was up there taking photos. So <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah, it's literally called the dungeon. That's what it was referred to. Uh, a lot of mistreatment um, and strange stuff going on. Are you ready to go alone? I don't know if I'm ready. Am I ever ready for these things? You're f***ing ready. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm ready for this. 
<sighs> we got this. Come on. All right. We've done way worse places than this. I suppose, but I don't know. Just um, have we ever done a place that's got a morgue and a dungeon? I don't know if we've done that before. So I'm going up. You're going down. Yeah. Yep. See ya. Alright guys, so just making my way down into the basement. I've been calling it the basement, it's actually the first floor. But, it feels like a basement. And here we go. Hello? Is anybody down here? Is that a bone? Is that real? Surely not. Doesn't feel like it's plastic. It feels like it's like plaster or something. Nervous. I'm very nervous. This is the attic. This is also known as the dungeon. Charming, but it literally was used as a dungeon. People were chained up here when they misbehaved. This was like the level up from the prison cell. So if you got sent to the prison cell, misbehaved even further, you were sent here tagging a car. We came down here with Patience, one of the dog guides here today, and she was telling us that hearing noises down here is very common, and she's heard loud unexplained noises down here on at least a few occasions. There is a boiler down here, or a furnace rather, sorry, but it's not operational, so if we do hear any noises, it's definitely not that. Is anybody here with me? People see shadows up here, people get touched up here. But people have seen a seven foot tall shadow figure up here. Like, numerous people. Um, so I'm not sure that's something I want to see. <laughs> but I kind of do. If I can get it on camera, that will be good. Right, so there's a couple of sections to the attic. We've got this area. This area, which is officially the dungeon. And then through this door. And then all the way down there, that's where the orphanage was. I just heard something. Like a tap in here. Okay. Let's go here. Ooh, this must be the doctor's surgery. Oh my god, that is so creepy. And this is why they call it the dungeon. These hooks up here, they are original. That's where they put the chains to chain, literally chain people to the wall. And the hooks are along the whole wall here. Isn't that sick, guys? That's just... I'm so sorry if that was something that you had to endure and had to go through. Being chained up here in the attic. I swear I just heard a noise in here then. Hello? I'm told this was the physician for everybody that was living here, like for the whole building. It's definitely not as sinister, I guess, as the morgue, but it's pretty creepy. It's like all these old like medication bottles and stuff. Heart medicine? Why would the doctor have poison in his office?
Tak. So I did bring a REM pod with me. And I just found an electronic candle up here, so I've lit that. So I've got a REM pod and a candle on the chair. Would anybody like to join me? Can you come and take a seat near this red light? Before that, I did hear a weird noise. It sounded like a groan or something. Oh my god, is that? Yep, that is an old coffin. So this must be where they have funerals. Oh, that is so creepy. I just heard a noise come from out that door. That's back with the surgeries. When I was playing music. Is anybody there? Do you like my music? <gasps> so I'm gonna take you in here just to show you. So let's keep an ear out for the REM pod. But in here was like the original orphanage. Do you want me to play again? guys like I'm hearing noises down here it's really creepy I'm not gonna lie we were getting really good responses on ghost 2 before um, but I do want to try something a little bit different so I'm gonna get Vox going now to see if we can get any voices come through I know I'm not in the morgue yet I'm getting there but I just feel like I was hearing noises down here so I want to scope out this funeral section first and see if we get any words This clip clearly shows two people walk past the glass window leading outside of the building. They are not mapped by Ghost 2 SLS as they are too far to register and just visible through the door's window. I know for a fact that these people were not Jared or myself as we were investigating inside. It is worth noting though that the grounds of the infirmary are also said to be haunted and not just the main buildings. Activity has been reported on the outside which is where the residents who lived here would have worked on a farm, which made the infirmary self-sufficient. Furthermore, there is also a cemetery just outside the building that holds thousands of graves, including the many unmarked graves of those who passed at the infirmary. So could these figures be paranormal or possibly actual living people simply cutting through the property in the dead of night? Leave a comment to share your thoughts. Uh, like you often see shadows passing by just this area near me. So a lot of kids would have stayed here and they said a, a lot of sort of homeless people stayed up here as well. Um, there was a fire here in the 1920s. Now there is a famous um, haunting of a lady who died because she was set on fire here. It's so... That's like one of... I feel like that's got to be one of the worst ways to go. But some people say it happened in this room but there was a fire here in the 1920s so they're not sure if the remnants of fire in this room are you know from this lady's death or just the fire that broke out here in the 20s
So our guide today said that this area, again, shadows are common, but she also said that she once had a spirit charge at her here, literally run at her. I had my back to what's known as the long hallway, and I actually had something run up on me, and I was the only one in the building, and I ended up turning around and telling him, like, leave me alone. I'm trying to make sure the building doesn't fall down, and it stopped instantly. And I feel like this is the perfect floor for that to happen because it's just wooden floorboard. So if someone was running on this, like you would unmistakably, unmistakably hear that. It's, that would be intense. Imagine just someone running at me right now. I genuinely, what the f I genuinely what the f I genuinely what the f I genuinely what the f Oh my god <laughs> Guys as soon as I hit record it just said patience Patience is the name of our tour guide The moment that Jared turns on goes to Vox, he received the response patience, which is actually very relevant to this location. Our guide who introduced us to the building and gave an on-camera interview for this video is named Patience, and it seems that she has built quite the relationship with the spirits whilst investigating here. Patience, if you're watching this, I hope you're watching this. I think someone down here likes you. So you, I don't know, I'm guessing you guys would have heard that little tap there. Tap on whatever is beside me here. The wall, maybe. Um, I'm unnerved. I'm on edge up here. Definitely feels not empty. <sighs> like warm and crowded. It's a freezing cold night as well, guys. Like that's the vibe up here. Warm and crowded. And I know this probably isn't the most pleasant place to be. But if someone can join me, can you rattle the chains? Can you knock something over? Can you go towards the red light? It is raining right now, so you might actually hear rain. Is there someone down here that likes patience? Hey, Mark. That was cute. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Um, maybe a little bit scared. <laughs> Should I be scared? Can you tell me why? Come on, can you please come and sit with me? Check some cat balls out as well, guys. Oh, fudge. Thank you if you're playing with those. I heard that you really like these balls. That one just rolled on its own, but I was moving, so maybe my weight on the floorboards could have shifted. It scared me a little bit, but. Actually, did it, did it light up? Oh, it is on, okay. Where? That was a really creepy voice then. Not the same voice that said patience, but really creepy. Can you tell me whose room this was? Oh, okay. Can you tell me what happened in this room? Thank you so much. I 
would really love if you not only lit up that ball, but went towards the red light and made that beep. I know you probably have people in here all the time asking you to do things. And I, I just appreciate if you do anything. I've come a very long way to visit you. I actually came from Australia, <laughs> which is halfway around the world. That's probably why I sound a bit funny as well. Can you tell me how I can find the morgue? Where's the morgue? Hey, the way you walk. Yeah, which way? Which way to the morgue, please? Ashton was... Can you tell me which way to the morgue? Okay, so I just had the cat ball go off on the wheelchair a few times. One of the cat balls moved on its own, but it could have just been my weight on the floorboards. It was a bit freaky. <laughs> sort of felt scared or a little bit scared when I came up here, but now I don't. And maybe it's just me thinking this through in my mind, but maybe it's not necessarily like bad people up here. You know what I'm saying? Like... These people were obviously mistreated here. There was a lot of um, trauma probably experienced and maybe you weren't necessarily like bad. You were put up here just because you did things wrong. Like, I don't know. There was people here from all walks of life who had, I guess, issues where maybe you couldn't follow the rules that were put in place. You know what I'm saying? Like... It's a lot of mental health issues, I guess. Is it in this one? Fear. Fear. Sorry. I feel like I just had the word fear and I, I swear someone asked me in the funeral parlor if I was scared. This doorway I do know does lead to the morgue. That's a bit unnerving. Are you okay with me entering here? I feel for you. This is not a nice place to be, a nice place to be left, right? I'm so sorry that this happened to you. It's just something I wanted to say. I have heard that you like these flashing light up balls, so I've bought some for you. I've got three, two on the floor and one on the chair there, which I've seen light up. And I just want to say thank you so much. I know apparently that's something that you like to do, that you like to mess with. Is there anything I need to be worried about in this room? Oh my god. Oh my god guys, this is this is where they would have dissected some of the patients and prepared the bodies. I know that this table is not original, but that's the original drain right there. So it definitely happened in this room. I'm gonna leave Vox on the table. Can you tell me what went on in this room? Get ready for what? What should I get ready for? Uh, is there anyone here in this room with me right now? And if there is, how many people? <gasps> Thank you so much. Oh my God, that's so cool. Thank you. other balls there's three balls in here in total I get really weird vibes in here uh, it's really really cold 
um, strangely it's actually colder in this building than it is outside we've found out but just like this room like these sinks here they would have cleaned the bodies in you've got the table in there um, you've got fridge and freezer here where they would have stored them it's just a weird place to be in you might be able to hear like running water, that's because there's a running spring under this building, which some people believe, Amy's have said it before, and we'll say it again, you know, a common theory is that water like helps conduct paranormal activity. But I haven't even told you the creepiest thing yet. These fridges and freezers where they stored the body, that's also where they stored their food. And these sinks that I just showed you, this wasn't only where they cleaned their bodies, but apparently is also where they cleaned their food. Ooh, what was that? Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, guys. It's official. We've got bats down here. And I'm petrified of them. That was so close to my head. Ooh, what was that? gone off so many times I would lose my mind if it actually rolled like along the floor like moved along the floor and maybe that's them trying to do that you know these things are pretty sensitive like you just need to tap them a little bit and they'll light up like that freaking out because there's at least one bat down here I don't know where it came from it was either the fridge or the morgue but I'm officially creeped out I'm getting out of here I think I caught that one in camera. Oh my god. I can't do bats. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm getting the hell out of here. I can't do it. I'm out. I'm out. Oh my god. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Bats. No, 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 no. Okay, so I'm currently in one of the children's rooms and I've set up some equipment. It's already gone off and I've chosen to set up the REM pod and the cat balls. And the reason for that is I've heard that some crazy stuff happens with those types of uh, pieces of equipment in this area. I've also bought some offerings. So I've got some lollipops out. So I hope that someone here wants to play and that you enjoy that. We're going to leave you to it though. So Jar and I are going to move to another area of the building to investigate. But I just want to see what happens in this room while it's empty with some gadgets out. Just going to set up our next um, session and Jared is on the floor because... More bats. They're not just in the basement apparently. Apparently they're also up on this floor. Great. Are you on edge now? Yes. <laughs> oh. Very much on edge. They're just... <laughs> you know? What the <laughs> just... is that? Are you imitating a bat? <laughs> We're about to set up and do an Estes in the men's ward because we were getting words before that seemed like something was interested in me. But 
Amy reckons she saw bats. I haven't seen them in there yet, but they're freaking me out. We don't want to harm them as well. So if there's too many bats in there and they're going crazy, we, we won't go in there. We'll instead go and investigate the cell because we also got some cool words in there too, right? Count. Yeah. Or counting the money. But yeah. I reckon there was two down there. Let's just go in slow and low slow to the ground. And slow and steady, low to the ground. And if they don't like us being there, then we'll do the cell. How's that Yeah, start? they might even be gone. I haven't seen them in the, like 10 minutes. Here I go. <laughs> Can you not? Oh my god. Okay, we made it. Bat free. I really don't want to be doing this. I just really feel like I'm on edge. I think because of the bats. I think that's going to make this sensory, sensual deprivation even more freaky for me, I think. Well, let's get into it. Maybe take your beanie off as well because if they want to play with your hair, like they said earlier. Oh yeah. <laughs> So guys, we have multiple camera angles. We've got the night vision camera here that's gonna be watching me. I'm gonna be listening to the radio with the headphones on uh, and a blindfold so I can't hear what Amy's asking and Amy's gonna ask a series of questions. I'm gonna be out here monitoring the hallway. You know, we got the word hallway, so that is relevant. And I'm gonna be, yeah, asking, trying to get some answers over here. We also have that camera with some gadgets set up in the kids room, which is on a different floor completely. And I hope that they come out to play, I really do. Um, but we'll see how we go up here. My name's Amy, that guy on the chair over here, his name is Jared. And we're here to talk to- Run. Uh, you mean me or are you gonna run at me? So I ain't a fast runner, I'm not gonna run anywhere. Hearing weird noises as well. If you run down this hallway, I've put some balls on the floor. One, two, stay. three. Okay, I'll stay. We felt drawn to come here to this area. Like you wanted us to be here. Were you talking about Jared's hair earlier? There is some Sleep. You would have slept here in these rooms, right? Like this one. There's some definite noises, guys, but it is raining quite heavily out there. There's a storm, so... Can you hear the rain? Problem. What's the problem? How can I help you? Say it. Okay, so earlier tonight we got uh, a response that said nine. Is that a room? Is that an age? It's the way it should be. It's the way it should be. What's the way that it should be? Is someone still enforcing the rules? Because if you have something to say, please say it to us. You are. We're not enforcing the rules, we're here and we hope that you can now do as you please. Were you talking to us earlier? Yes. <gasps> That's pretty cool because we really felt like someone was talking to us in this area and wanting us to be here. Should I go in a room or a hallway? Or... Welcome. Oh, I appreciate it. I really do. I'm hearing noise down there. Can you tell me who's doing that? Dirty. Or 30. Is that how many people are here? Your age? Psych. Maybe that's referring to psychiatric treatment? Five of us. Is that five men? Susan. Susan. Or Susie. <gasps> the little, uh, there's a little girl here. Susie is actually quite a relevant name to come through here, as one of the child spirits who haunts this property is thought by many to be named Susie. 
And then we do have a little girl spirit that people have called Susie. I don't know if she's actually named Susie or not. Did you want to play with us? We left some um, things in the, the kids' room for you. What the f Okay. I definitely heard a door or something. What was that noise? It can't have been- Stay. Like okay, I'll stay. Stranger. I'm wigging out a bit. What the heck? I heard a door or something down here and I was just about to walk out and then he says stay. Right before that he says Susan and Susie. I don't, I'm the one that does the majority of the research here guys. Jared just sort of comes along and wings it. I don't know if I would have mentioned the little girl being named Susie earlier to him. Okay, I'm staying. Only if you do something really big for me. Can you touch Jared? Maybe light up these Transferred. doors? Transferred. Transferred, what does that mean? Did you go somewhere else? It's moving. Did you move something? Is that the noise that I heard? It's out. Crazy area. They did keep people in here who had, you know, mental health issues. That man. This man? On the chair? Him. Him, yeah, that guy. Women. Women are down that end, except me. Down there. Yeah, down that end. Down there. This is really weird. Okay, you wanted to talk to this guy. We've brought him in here. Six, three. Six, three. You should know. I should know, okay. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what that means. Stay like... down. Those stairs there. Maybe that's- Fire the... panel. Fire panel. It's weird because we got shown the fire panel earlier because it's a fault with like the sprinkler system at the moment and stay down, like maybe that's... Jared. <gasps> that's him, that's his name, yeah. Stay down could be like, someone in charge, say like the superintendent saying, stay down, like you're not allowed, you know what I'm saying? You're allowed to talk to us, whoever wants to talk. It also just said Carol. No. You'll have to bleep that out, I don't want that in the video. Are you kidding me? You've got to be f***ing me. These responses are a little strange to us. First, Jared's name comes through, which is closely followed by the name Carol. Carol is of personal significance to Jared, though he does not wish to disclose this information publicly on this channel. This name first came through for us while investigating the Sally house a few weeks ago, and it hasn't been the only instance of this happening. Do you think this could be a spirit attempting to communicate with us who is not tied to this exact haunted location? Leave a comment below. This is too much. This is... Have you spoken to us before? Before tonight, have you spoken to us before tonight? Help me out. That's what I just heard. Young voice. I'm here to help you. There's someone who's trying to control you. That's not on. Down the corridor. Oh, I just turned to look down here, okay. Should I go and check out the other side? No. Okay, I'll stay here with you then. Is that what you want? I'm gonna take that as... Latin. Latin. 
What would you like from us? If we could tell you something or give you something or do something for you, what would you like from us? Music. Music? You know what? What? I'll play some music for you. There are a lot of noises going on right now. I do think I'm so. done with you. I'm gonna go and get some music ASAP. That was really weird. What? Just I like said music, but what, what about it? I said, is there anything I can do for you or tell you? Or, like, pretty much said, what do you want from me? And you said music. So now I'm like, what? let's <laughs> let's go get the music. Also, uh, just come with me. Just come with me. Felt like somebody could be in here. And I know that patient said that earlier, but I heard it sounded like a door or something. A door? Yeah. And it was so, everything was so weird. Was that like loud or like It something? sounded like it was coming from down here and I went to go check it out. And yeah, it was loud. And um, you were like, stay. So I don't know if that was like a protective thing or Good morning, it was, maybe? Yeah. So just walk down there. <laughs> You go first. I'll oh, just follow you. Let me get my hat sorted out. Okay. I can see the cell door from here and that's closed. So I don't think it would be that. Patients did say earlier it might actually sound like people have come in. Sometimes that's the paranormal activity you get. Like it feels like there's actually people in here or you know sounds like. Really, you know what's really weird? And during that estus, at first, I didn't think, I feel like I was getting much. And then it really ramped up, like, especially like when it said my name and a string of other things. Like, it just, it, it just changed. Like, it felt different. Yeah. Can I also ask you, did you know about the little girl? Uh, did I mention that? I reckon I might have. I know that there's children here because we were playing with the dum-dums. The little girl, though? Parts. Some people, rem some people say her girl. name. Yeah. Do you know what her name is? I forgot. <laughs> you never listen to that shit anyway. It's Susie. Oh, I said Susan. You said Susan or Susie. Oh, yeah. It was hard to hear. It was like a subtle. So I, w I was like, I no. can't, I don't know if Jared will know that piece of info. And maybe it's just in his head. You know no, what I'm saying? I totally forgot about that. Okay. Oh, this is weird. I feel like every door is open as well. Except this one, and we've been and deliberately we've closing deliberately, this. Yeah. Like, every like time we film in front of this door, I'm like, you're my witness, I'm closing this. Yeah. So this hasn't moved. Maybe you leave it open now. All right, you're my witness, I'm leaving it open now. <laughs> in this moment, Jared and I head downstairs to grab my MacBook so we can play music as requested by the spirits. When we return upstairs, we once again hear the same banging I captured earlier on the camera we left rolling there. We immediately roll on our secondary camera after hearing this, only to capture more noises. What? Okay guys, we're hearing a noise down here. Go, 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 go. And there is definite bangs down here. There's definitely noises down here. They're probably pissed off because I didn't bring any music yet. Did you know that this building goes back that far? What? No. Men's bathroom. Could that have come from in here maybe? I don't know. What? I'm hearing noise in here. I think it's coming from in here. There is rain, but those bangs are undeniable. They're bangs. I bought you some music. I'm going to play it. 
If you can do me a favor, if you really like the music, can you move something? I've heard that you can do that. Slam a door. Move one of these balls and make them light up. Just do anything that you can to show us that you like it. I really think we just stirred something up. I could hear growling or movement. Maybe they didn't like the music as well. Like, it was a bit of an annoying song. <laughs> Can you whistle? I'm just like hearing noises out there and I don't know if it's like the rain outside or it sounds like creaking like footsteps or something. Did you hear like dragging noises? Yeah. That was like dragging noises or like a, to me it sounded like a, sh a, ca a shower curtain opening. That's what it sounds like to me. Ugh. Some definite movement going on down there. Maybe we go to it. What was that? Did you just click or something? No. Did you hear it? I thought that was you. you that wasn't you? Oh no! <laughs> that scared me! It wasn't like this, was it? No, it's too well, loud. The light would have turned on. Yeah. Want to crank a spirit box in the cell? Okay. Okay, so much going on. We thought that we'd come and do a spirit box in here in the cell. We're filming the door from both angles so you can see us. We ain't touching it. <laughs> and I've also got a, another static night vision camera out in the hall. We're gonna do a spirit box because I've heard that they're really good in here. You ready? Yeah. My name is Amy and I'm here tonight with Jared in this little cell. And we would love to talk to anyone that's here. Can you give me a hello or maybe tell me your name? Can you tell us who we're interacting with outside in the hallway before? Name would be lovely. Did you like the music?
Can you tell us a little bit of something about this room? Can you tell us about this place in general? How many children are here? Can somebody move the cell door for us? The former Williamson Memorial Hospital, now referred to as the Old Hospital on College Hill, is said to be one of the most haunted places in West Virginia. The history behind the hospital, it was formerly called Williamson Memorial Hospital. Um, it opened as a functioning hospital in 1928, so she is 94 years old. Pretty much kept open as a regular hospital until 1988. Then they built a newer hospital just right up above the hill from her. They kept the hospital open as doctor clinics and pediatrics and lung specialists and things like that until 2014, and then they closed the hospital for good. And she was used for storage up until 2020 when she was shut down permanently. I was actually born in this hospital. My mom's able to tell me that I was born on the third floor. So for me to be able to go to the floor that actually where my life began is, is pretty amazing feeling. And then I also lost two grandparents that I never met here as well. So some of the connections when I walk through the hallways, you know, I'm hoping maybe at one point in time I can reconnect with my grandparents. I believe there's a reason that I was called to buy this hospital, if that makes sense, or led to buy the hospital. I believe that she has a lot of stories to tell. Having a history spanning decades within a busy hospital, which had seen death and trauma, the old hospital now left standing empty is a known paranormal hotspot. Visitors to the building have claimed to hear, smell, feel, and even sight the unexplainable, including shadow people and a nurse still making her rounds, who has even been captured in photographs. The most common things that most people pick up, and even myself, what I've heard, um, door shutting. And as odd as it sounds, music playing at certain times in certain rooms. Not sure if it's because there maybe would have been radios in the rooms back in the days. Children laughing, ch children um, running, you will hear um, um, voices, male's voices, female voices, children's voices. Lots that will flicker on and off. One of the other things that's kind of wild is um, the hospital equipment that's here. Most of the building does not have power, so they're not even plugged up, but the equipment will beep and go off like they are. It's just it's just pretty wild and, and kind of freaky at the same time. And it can be spooky, especially if you're here by yourself. With so many strange happenings reported within this extremely haunted hospital, we were excited to visit and investigate the four floors of the building, as well as a basement area where some particularly scary activity is said to center. But what we would uncover this night, and how I would myself be personally affected by this building, was truly unnerving. This is a big vocation to cover. We are commencing the walkthrough now that night has fallen. Some weird things have already happened to us as well and one area in particular, Jared saw something super, super creepy and I felt very, very off whilst we were there. So looking forward to going back there, kind of not really. <laughs> But we're currently on the ground floor, the first floor here. There is a lot to cover. Every single floor has a story and a lot of history here as well. This place opened in the 20s. A lot of stuff going on here. These guys here on the walls were the founders too. And I kind of like the kept here, memorialized here too. Did you? Okay. I did hear that. You heard that, right? Yeah, there was a tap behind us. That's cool. Somebody here, you can join us. We're going to be here all night filming. And again. Thank you. <laughs> as soon as I turn we around, yeah. the noise goes off. And we're literally just getting started. I think it's ghost tube time.
Right, so I've just hit record on a device. I'm going to carry it around in my hand. So please do not be shy to come up to me. I'll give you permission you can touch me. But if you come towards this light in my hand, maybe you can use it to tell me your name or say hello. Tell me anything. Guys, this place is so cool. This is wicked. This is a huge old hospital. So many ghost stories here. So much has happened here. I'm excited just to show you around, just to walk around. I mean, hopefully we get some paranormal activity, but if not, it's just really cool here. So this area here, we can't get through because there is so much old medical equipment stuck up here. But a nurse hangs out here. A nurse is said to linger on this floor, but she's also been seen throughout the entire hospital. Um, probably the most famous one is our nurse that never clocked out. She's pretty well seen on every floor. The story behind her is pretty amazing, although we don't really have a name. Um, it was a nurse that worked in the emergency room back in the 1950s. She was killed in a car accident and she actually passed away in the ER that she worked at. So um, there have actually been um, images caught of her in the hospital and some people believe that she still wanders the hallways today. So we've got this entire place to ourselves guys. That's four floors and a basement and the basement actually was used for stuff too. Like there's some really cool rooms down there. That's actually where I had my experience that Amy sent, mentioned before. So my name is Amy and I'm here tonight with Jared and we'd like to just introduce ourselves. If there's somebody here that wants to communicate, please don't be shy. Bracelet. Bracelet. The response of Bracelet at this time baffled us a little, and we weren't quite sure how it could have been relevant. Yet something was to happen a little later in the night, which could have meant this word did have significance. I was thinking jewellery like a bracelet, but don't they put a bracelet on you when you're admitted to hospital? Oh, like a medical bracelet. Yes. We should see if we can find one around here. There are a lot of old artifacts kept here, so maybe that's something we will encounter. I don't know if this is where patients were processed and they would get the bracelet, if that's even what it's referred to as. If there's a nurse here, thank you for sticking around and looking out for everyone. One of the coolest things here, guys, is this. This is the original elevator. This thing is 94 years old. Uh, I thought I'd just seen someone like peekaboo around here. Really? It could have just been a shadow and then my eyes playing a trick. I mean, really, it could have been. It can come out. Also a lot of children here. They, they believe. And it wasn't very big if it was something. It could have just been the handrail. Here, I thought that I had seen something peering around the corner, despite being in the building alone. But after checking, we couldn't see anything out of the ordinary, so we carried on upstairs. I feel like this elevator to me is like creepier than any paranormal encounters we might have tonight, you know what I mean? Yes, and we're game. We're gonna ride with you guys though. <laughs> 94 years old. Where am I going? Uh, we'll go to level two. I have also heard that the elevator has moved on its own before in the past as well. So it's kind of weird, particularly since someone needs to call it and press a button and there was no one around to press the button. <laughs> Father. Like not like dad, as in like father. You need to go father. Or... Is it father or further? Maybe we need to keep going up. Hi, my name's Amy. This is Jared behind me. We just heard a noise and wanted to check it out and see if there's someone here. We're not afraid. Level two here, where we are. It's an interesting one because they don't have heaps of information on it, but people, including the owner, who we spoke to earlier, 
have had paranormal experiences here? I've had several experiences while um, being the owner of the hospital. Things from, you know, simple as doors shutting after um, I open them or vice versa. I can hear someone on another floor when I'm on one floor. I can hear children giggling. One of the, probably the, the scariest one, and, and he wasn't scary, but probably the one that startled me the most was um, I was walking through the second floor and um, just checking to make sure everything was okay and I heard a male's voice holler at me and he just said hey I turned around and I went through every room on the second floor and I couldn't find him so I'm not sure who he was or what he wanted hi is there anyone that wants to talk to me so I don't know if anyone watching is big on paranormal TV I do know that uh, Destination Fear filmed here and Dakota apparently slept on this was the floor he was sleeping on. During that episode he heard glass break and the source of the glass was actually this room and I just copped a whiff of perfume. Yeah. Did you smell? Yeah, I thought it was more like potpourri or something. <sighs> I've still kind of got it. It's different to the room we just walked through. And I don't remember smelling it today when we came in into this room. Oh. Um. Uh. What? I think that's really creepy because. Go in there and have a look. <gasps> that's yeah. where babies were, right? I feel like. Maybe the next floor up was paediatrics. But who's not. to say some of this stuff? I mean, they said, she did say they don't know much about this floor, what this was used for. Maybe someone was searching for the baby here. Lots of babies would have been born here. Even the owner, the current owner, was born here. So I feel like that was really weird that that came out. And we were just standing just outside this room here with these little baby crib things. That is really weird. If there's somebody here looking for their baby, uh, can we have a name please? Maybe we can help you. So just walking back to where we got that response. If there's somebody here, I'm so sorry if you're looking for your baby, maybe we can help you. I don't know how we can do that. Maybe you can give us a name as a starter. It is funny though, because this is where on that show, Dakota heard glass breaking. And then he came down here and there was broken glass on the floor, but there's nothing broken in the room or no source of where glass would come from. I don't know if anyone knows what this big old thing is either. I've never seen one of these before today, but it's pretty cool. This is where you go in and a doctor would test your hearing. It's like a silent room and it blocks out all the sound. Any Ace Ventura fans? Oh! So voices have been heard down here, footsteps, giggles, children's voices, a lot going on down in the second <laughs> That's just a train. It's not a ghost train either, but it scared me. Hey, I don't know if these are original to this hospital, but are these for babies? I'm pretty sure they are. Like little cribs or something. Oh dear lord. What if I just walk into? <laughs> That's freaky. <laughs> oh, there's one. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. Just made it up the third floor and the window down here has a very infamous story to go with it that involves a possible suicide or potentially a murder and a murderer. One of the other probably bigger stories that kind of haunts the hospital is the true story of a gentleman by the name of Mose Blackburn. He was a local restaurant owner in the city of Williamson back in the 60s. From what we can gather through our research in the newspaper articles, um, Mr. Blackburn got into an altercation with his wife and city police work was called. When the police responded, an officer went to, um, they kind of went around the car. One went to the passenger side and one went to Mose's side. He was on the driver's side. And for whatever reason, Mose drew a gun and shot the city 
city police officer. That officer was brought here to this hospital and sadly passed away. Of course, an altercation broke out and Mose was brought to this hospital as well. There are several stories um, that surround Mose and what happened to him, but basically what we have found in our research, he was brought here and was expected to make a full recovery, was going to go on to jail and face his, uh, you know, time in court. He had asked a deputy that had been stationed outside of his door to go get him a drink of water. And when that deputy did, some people say an evil spirit told him to do it. Some people say he was thrown. Others think that he was just trying to escape, but he took off running and jumped out the third story floor window and landed on the sidewalk. It didn't kill Mose. They brought him back up to the hospital. And again, he was expected to make a full recovery and go on to face his time in court. However, almost a month to the day that he jumped, he passed away. And um, nobody really knows why. There's a theory that he was murdered. Um, some people believe he killed himself, but a lot of people believe Moses is still here today. So that's the window, Jared, right behind you. This is where it happened? That's the window, yeah. Oh, dude, look. Oh, that's oh, so cool. Cool. They're like real x-rays. Legit. That's like crazy. someone's head or uh, sorry, leg or bone. That's actually like someone's skull, skull by the looks. It's a face. That's really cool. Oh, it's a real hospital. So much decay. If we just peek in this room here, a lot of history here. Watching. You're watching us. We'd love to watch you back. What? Whoa. Is there someone here? We just heard you. Whoa. Whoa. I feel like they're slowly getting an interest in us. Is that an observation window? Oh yeah. If you're watching us, we'd love to talk, we'd love to communicate. I don't know why you're here. We are here to talk. We've traveled a long way, so we might sound funny we're actually from australia what the hell they look like bodies strung up on rope or something what oh yeah <laughs> that is legit what it looks like more baby stuff Yep. Oh, this is the wallpaper room, Joe. Oh, yeah. We've seen this earlier today, and I'm not. Why am I getting a magnetic spike in the middle of this wallpaper room? I can't replicate. So, someone coming around me. That's okay, but are you able to tell me your name? Or what this room was? I don't know why this room is decorated differently. But... Someone making a noise down here. We just walked the whole length of this wing. I don't, I don't know what that was. I know that this place was used for a brief period of time as a Halloween attraction, but there's some like red stains, if you know what I mean. And it's just, I'm always like, is that actual blood or is that part of that Halloween attraction? You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel that because I'm seeing them as well and <laughs> exact same things are going through my mind. Like on this counter, for example, I'm like, yeah, that might, actually be blood i think that's where they examine so what <laughs> did you read the poster in there how's your love life oh yeah i'm <laughs> going on there this guy's ready for his examination <laughs> oh that is definitely paint <laughs> but some of the others i'm not too sure look at the wall though to the left oh geez red Wait. What? I thought I saw something in here. Like what? What did that just say? Red. It said red, and we're just looking at the red paint, so that's... I thought I saw something. It was probably just these um, trash, bag. trash bags here, but 
Let me just look around. Last floor time. This is the top floor. This one's a creepy one too. Uh, is there someone around me? Or is there something to trigger? Okay, that's the second time that's happened, yeah? So guys, that noise on ghost tube means that the magnetometer spiked. That can be triggered by nearby metals and objects. So normally if we're near like iron bars or going up the staircase where there's a handrail that can set it off. But yeah, the second time that's gone off now and you've tried to recreate it and there's nothing. There's literally nothing here. It's very strange. This room, you know what this room reminds me of? The chair room from the Ohio State Reformatory. No. Because there are no windows in this room. There like, are none. Have a look around, there is no yeah, windows there here. there is none. Yeah, who builds a, a room with no windows? Like, what is its purpose? All right, I hate that you compared this to the chair room because that place scared me. If you haven't watched that video, seriously check it out. Something touched me and there's evidence paired with something touched me touching me to back that up what gets me about the fourth floor here is that whilst the hospital was in operation this floor scared the staff the fourth floor is pretty amazing to us it's the smallest floor on the hospital but for whatever reason we have a lot of stories on of that floor so the pharmacy is located on the four floors where as well as some surgical rooms and observation rooms some of the stories that we have been um, told was that staff would not work here after seven or eight o'clock at night because of the weird things that would happen on the fourth floor such as things moving by themselves um, strange noises that people would hear and couldn't account for, um, doors slamming, things of that nature. The other thing that makes the fourth floor very fascinating, I think, to a lot of people is that this hospital was also a teaching hospital and um, there was two surgical rooms and observation rooms where the nurses would sit in the observation rooms and watch, but um, there have been quite a few um, paranormal activity um, captures on those floors as well. Your biggest fears are here. So this was used as a pharmacy and it was also where a lot of surgeries were performed and these surgeries are kind of unique because they weren't just performed. People who were training to be surgeons themselves or nurses could come and watch as well as family members. Can you imagine going to watch one of your family members have surgery and be cut open? That is really weird, yeah. I don't know if I would enjoy watching that. I mean, I get queasy with blood and that. So that is weird. Could this be where the surgeries were done? Well, the owner was telling us today that there was like a, a window that people would observe through. So this could be it. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't watch. No. Leave us a comment, guys, if that's something you would be interested to watch. Could you do it? Would you even want to watch your family member have surgery? Never fear the clowns are here. Oh, oh God. I have had enough clown run-ins on my USA trip. Thank you. Just putting that out there. <laughs> Oh, this is really weird. I thought I just heard a voice when you walked in. Really? In there with you. What? I hear <laughs> I hear a train now, but maybe it was that, I don't know. I thought I heard a high pitch kid's voice. I thought I just heard something out there actually, as you walked in. I can hear a train in the distance, so I'm making that known. What did your what did your sound like? A little kid. Mine's, yeah, yeah. I feel like I heard that too. I no. didn't hear what they said, it was like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. kid. Kid's voice. Kid's voice. Why is this machine though, hey? Ventilator. Breathing? Robert. 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 Thank you so much for sharing your name, Robert. Can you tell us how old you are? That's our first name for the night. I would love to know how old you are as well, Robert. I wonder if Robert is a kid because we both felt like we could hear that. Maybe not though. Yeah, look at this splatter all around here. Surely that's not real. Oh my god, it's all in this room as well. You can't see it on the night vision. Sorry, what? Beer. You can't see on the night vision. What did it say? Beer. It said beer. We'll have a beer with you. <laughs> Someone spent their last days here and they're like, yeah, I want a beer. You know what I mean? Heck yes. Oh no. Jared, are you seeing this? Yes. 
This is not a bracelet, is it? Ah, uh, yes, that is. Sorry, I wasn't saying that. I thought you were talking about the blood. No. <laughs> well, we found our bracelet. Or is it a necklace? That's a pretty skinny neck. Okay, what, what do you... I'm just going to put ghost tube on it. Were you leading us here? Are these the bracelets you're referring to? What about them? I knew we were going to find a bracelet. I told you there's got to be a bracelet in this building somewhere. I was thinking a medical bracelet though, so not was gonna I. lie. These, um, these look quite modern, so I doubt that they're original or anything, but it's weird that it's, there's just two of them sitting here. Were we being led here? Maybe it's not even relevant, I don't know. Can you give us another clue as to why we should be here? Should we move on or do you want to stick around in here a bit longer? Institution. <gasps> what about that? Institutions relevant. I feel like that's what they refer to like hospitals or like, you know, mental institutions or health institutions, you know what I mean? I just don't know what it could mean. I guess that's the frustrating part about doing what we do. You can get these little snippets, but it's really hard to piece together what the meaning is. And I just want to know. At this point in the night, we decided to brave the scariest part of the hospital, the underground basement, which was used for a number of reasons. It was also where Jared claimed to see something earlier in the afternoon before the sun had even set. The basement is probably Mama's favorite floor. It is the biggest floor of the hospital, um, probably the most historic and um, probably the most floor that saw the most action. A lot of paranormal activity it has been caught and captured down there, specifically between the two x-ray rooms. The pediatric floor was also down there after the hospital closed and was turned into a pediatric floor. So there's also some children's activities and children's spirits that you could hear from time to time, children giggling, laughing, those kind of things. The morgue is also located in the basement as well as the incinerator room. So the basement kind of has this feel of um, dark, sometimes sad, and um, kind of sometimes scary to go into. I'm a little nervous, um, but that's fine. We're going down there and hopefully we get some good pings on ghost tube. It is freaking cold down here. Like extremely cold. Grip my teeth, I'm ready. It is definitely like five to 10 degrees Celsius colder down here for sure. No idea what Fahrenheit that would be. <laughs> they had this set up for little kids. This was like the pediatric ward for a while. Just what young kids need when they're really sick and scared, go down into the basement. There's even like toys and stuff here. Like remnants from when it was open. I don't feel good down here. I feel a bit sick when I come down here. And honestly, when we came down here earlier today with Tonya, as soon as I came down here, I felt a bit ill. And I'm feeling it again now down here. It just kind of feels like nausea, like a bit yucky. And I honestly, like I've been really drained since we got here. I don't know if it's something <laughs> taking energy down here in particular, this is where I'm getting, I am getting the most vibes, but I just feel really off, really, really off down here. How I was feeling here seemed to only escalate throughout the night until I was completely drained and could barely function. I remember feeling normal and excited for this investigation, but spending time in this building seemed to gradually take its toll on me, which you will observe throughout this video. Whoa, a VHS. When was the last time you guys seen one of these? Leave a comment. <laughs> a little rocking horse. Aww. Behind me are the two x-ray rooms. This particular one is where I saw something today. So we were walking down here with our guide Tonya today and she was just showing us around. I got to maybe this point right here. It was pitch black. Um, I've got a light on now, but when the light's not on, it's pitch black. Even during the day, it's dark down this end of the basement. And I got to this point and I thought that there was something there. Like, I didn't think ghost or person. I thought like piece of furniture or something. And then when I put on my flashlight, it was a big room. There's nothing there. 
So I thought that was really weird. I thought I could see in the dark, like my eyes adjusting like something here. And yeah, there's nothing. It's just a big, big old empty room. Oh, more x-rays too. Cool, sort of interesting. I honestly think that you seeing something in here is kind of interesting because you said that and then after, so we didn't even know this, Tony said, oh wow, like a lot of people see shadow figures down here. And that kind of makes sense if you felt as though something was there, I guess, blocking the light, like there was something right there and then you shone the light in and it went through whatever that was, that could have been a figure standing there, Jared. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna say that it was 100% paranormal. It's just, it's just my experience and what I had. But yeah, I thought there was something there and there wasn't. But a lot also happens in the room across here and she said so much so that one of her guides had, I guess, too many experiences down here, seen a few things and was like, nah, I will not come back to this area. So people refuse to come down here still. Anyone in here in the x-ray? Down here where we're headed is where the original morgue was. It was apparently later moved to the building next door, but it's always eerie to go into a morgue. Wow, there is a lot of decay down here as well. The building is just flaking apart. All right, guys, this is perhaps the, I don't want to say the scariest, but definitely the most gruesome so where I'm about to take you is known as the incinerator. What? Hello. Whoa. Okay, that door I just opened, but I swear this one just creaked as I opened it. You go first. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. This door's really heavy. Tonya said today, she said it and she was not wrong. This definitely has like Freddy Krueger vibes in here. Like all these pipes and stuff. Okay, so honestly, this is one of the sadder, more heavier places in the hospital. Again, I've said before, it's called the incinerator. It was a place where bodies and body parts were disposed of. But what it basically was used for was kind of a catch-all for everything. Um, back in the 20s and 30s and early 40s, when people would have uh, maybe a body part amputated or if a homeless person passed away, um, their remains would be placed in this incinerator. And we get asked a lot of the times if those ashes are still here, and they are. We don't have any record of who they are, but we know that there are ashes in there. But it was also used to burn things like medicine bottles, newspapers. It was kind of a catch-all for all of it for the hospital. It was pretty heavy for me when I found out that, you know, people were actually burned and, and lost in this incinerator room because it just, you know, it makes you wonder who, who's there and if they're still here today and if they're at peace. One of the eerie things here actually is that there's still ash here. It's not known 100% for sure, you know, whether there's bodily remains in the ash, but it's very well possible. They don't want to move it. They don't want to disturb it. And I totally get that. It's like, where do you move it to? Where do you bury it? You don't know who's in there, what their, well, what their wishes would have been. Do you scatter it somewhere? I don't know. It's just... It's very heavy, so I'm just, you can see the ash down here. And literally inside, it's, it's filled. All right, guys, I find it very weird that Ghost Tube has been so quiet down here. I like you. <laughs> just to just say no. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you so much. We try to be respectful where we can, especially places like this. But it has been very quiet down here, so I think because Jared and I have felt or, you know, possibly seen things that could be paranormal, we're going to use a different communication method down here to reach out and hopefully we can get um, a bit more engagement with that. Right, so whoever just said that, if you want to follow us, we're going to make our way down to the x-ray room. We would love to hear more from you. Could this be 
possibly the grave now. I know there's just ashes behind me, but it con would constitute as a grave now. I feel like we're getting a lot of responses here. Maybe we should do a help I next know. experiment in this room. I didn't think we would even get anything well, in we here, to be honest. We weren't getting any words. Until you're like, we're not getting any words, so we're going to go now. And then it's like, oh, she said she's not getting anything. Let's give us <laughs> Thank you. Unsure of where to go next, we made our way into the x-ray room, where Jared had earlier sighted something lurking in the darkness, and where many people have sighted shadow figures. We decided to reach out using GhostTube Vox to see if we could document any relevant vocalizations, whilst using an old pair of crutches I had found as a trigger object. We also thought it might be wise to monitor upstairs, which is also said to be quite active, so we left a GhostTube SLS camera rolling in this space too. Okay, so we are recording a GhostTube Vox session in the basement an x-ray room at the uh, old hospital on College Hill. Is there anyone around us that wants to make their presence known? Are you able to maybe tell us your name or tell us something about yourself? I'm sorry I didn't realise we had to be here by a certain time. Can you tell us what we're doing in here today? I've got a sore leg. Can you help me? <laughs> These are actually hurting me, so I'm going to ditch them. Alright, my leg's better. Thank you. Cured. Is that what I said? I just sort of said cured. <laughs> yep, legs feeling great. Thanks. So you're a doctor then? Is there somewhere else you'd rather us go in the hospital to, to uh, talk or hang out with you? Security. 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 Can you tell us how many people are down here? I'm a student. There were student nurses. There's literally like a nurse school right next door, the building next door. Are you a student nurse? I was. Or a doctor. Yeah, I heard that too. I was. There was a noise out there. What? There was a noise out there. You can come in. Who just made that noise? It's really weird like when I saw that dark door like we'll stand obviously I was standing on the other side but now this door looks completely dark I can't see out of it was there someone standing in here earlier today when Jared shone his light in here hit reset I'm... hit reset is there something wrong with your instrument in here I still, I just want to say like this obviously is going to look lit up on that camera, but I can't see anything. I swear I'm seeing something there again, just like today. Like, it seems like there's someone standing there. Is there anything there? What can you see on the viewfinder? Yeah, it's pretty dark, to be honest. I can just see the door and darkness around it. Is there someone standing in the doorway? Can you give us a sign? Can you tell me why my shoulder hurts down here? Pain is final. Pain is final. All right, ever since I've come down here tonight, I've been getting a pain just in here. Can you tell me what that is? It's very sharp and it kind of hurts a little. Can't wait. Can't wait. We're here all night for you. We really, really, really want to talk to somebody. I'd love a name as well. Also, I don't want to sound dramatic, but I have, like, not when we initially came down, this second time we come down, I've been getting a sharp pain in here, like a stabbing pain, and it has just moved, and now this sharp stabbing pain is in my back, back here. So it's gone from, like, here 
to here. It's not like on my skin, it's inside my body. Could it be like, because you're holding the camera for a little bit? It definitely could, but I don't normally get that. It's like a sh very sharp pain. Can you tell me what that is, doctor? <coughs> sound like some weird siren. Siren or like, <laughs> sound, to me it sounded like a like, um, medical emergency or... Yeah, like a... A siren like, eh, ah, you or know, like a machine code going off or something. Blue, or I don't know the codes and stuff, but get you yeah, get up to floor two or something, you know. Do you hear singing? No, I didn't. I was, I wasn't listening. Though, was it subtle? Here, I muted Ghost to Vox as I heard a sound which I described as the faint singing. This is something that Jared did not hear in the moment, but the audio of our camera did pick up on. In the replay, it does not sound quite like singing, but more like a gust of wind whistling and howling. If this was on any other floor of the building, I would discredit the noise a little more. But down here in the basement, we were extremely sheltered, and we did not hear anything similar to this during our time down there. What do you think could have caused this? We continued our ghost tube vox session for some time in the x-ray room, but didn't receive much further activity. So we moved our session into the incinerator room, as we had earlier documented some interesting words for our original ghost tube app. Is there somebody here who can share their name with us? Again, my name is Amy and this here is Jared. That was like a beauty. Like someone screaming almost, like screech. I'm sorry if you're in pain. Uh, is there anything we can do for you? Too many. Too many. Too many. <gasps> <gasps> uh, is that the door? Yep. If there's someone there, you can come in. <gasps> what the f okay, I said you can come in. Can you open the door? Is there? Ask. Is, is there someone in here with us? No, I mean like a living person. No, we're the only people in the building. All right, who's behind this door? And the light. Oh. And Jerry. Did you hear Jerry? As well. I heard someone, like, it sounded like someone screaming in the distance. I'm too scared to stand near the door. Yeah, Jerry, but I also heard like a muffled like, oh, behind you. That's what I thought I heard. That's I what I thought. I heard someone in the distance, that's what it sounded like. I think we're gonna have to replay it though, because in the moment, like sometimes these things don't sound like the replay. What, what are you trying to say? I'm so sorry we missed that. What used to happen in this room? That, that is the same noise again. Like a, like an emergency siren or something. That could be relevant to the hospital, you know. What's that noise? Can you tell us what that noise is? Who is he? All right, was someone messing with this door before? I'd really love you just to open it, swing it open. Oh, that last one sounded very unnatural. <laughs> it's freaking me out. He knows. He knows, he knows it's freaking me out. I feel very uncomfortable down here. Is that what you want? Is there something you would like from us? Can you tell us? Can you give us a sign? 
your support. I just heard your support. We're here for you. Oh, I'm here to listen to anything that you have to say. What would you like to share with us today? They're talking. They're talking. Wow. Thank you so much if you're talking to us. We appreciate that so much. I don't mean to seem a little scared. I do feel a little uncomfortable down here though. Are you able to say something that will maybe put me at ease? A friendship. I just, I, I just heard a friendship. I heard a fracture. That's what I heard. Okay, we heard so two you, different things. Let us know what you guys think. These sound experiments, that's the thing. You have to be careful of like noise pareidoli and what your mind is perceiving the noise as. A fracture. A fracture. Are you okay? Are you okay? Whilst we picked up some pretty terrifying noises downstairs in the incinerator room, our Ghost Tube SLS camera, left on the upper floors of the hospital, also managed to capture some moments of interest. During this time, the camera documented two noises, about three minutes apart, the first of which sounds like something tapping directly on the actual camera, with the second sounding like a crash as if something heavy had been dropped in the distance. Check it out. Do you need me to? Mm -hmm. Scared. You need you to? Yeah, a little bit. Just stand in the book away and talk to me or something. Since we had captured so many intriguing responses in the basement of the haunted hospital, we decided to move a ghost tube SLS camera down there to further monitor the space while we headed back upstairs to continue our investigation. As we were setting up the camera in the basement, we managed to capture a voice, which to me almost sounds like a child. This is not something either of us heard in the moment and is interesting, as children were once treated in this space. Okay. There is definitely something going on in here. That REM pod triggered and you may not be able to hear it over the high pitched beep, but there was a man's voice I heard up here. I don't know if you heard it, Jared. I thought I heard a dude. I didn't, but that is extremely creepy. Guys, we were just setting up for our next segment, which is gonna be an Esther session. So that was really weird. That all happened while we were setting up. You ready to start, Ames? There it goes again. It's freaking me out as well because I can hear the dogs going nuts and it's like, do they know something? <laughs> There's something going on with me as well, guys. I was literally about to have a nap and sort of give up. I am feeling completely drained. Not even like tired or fatigue. It's completely like something's just taken all my energy, like just slurped it all out of me. I'm struggling to walk upstairs, like to lift my feet and walk. I just feel really heavy really gross and just like empty i i was literally saying to jared i'm gonna have to send you off to do this by yourself i'm gonna have to have a nap or something so we've decided to do an st session we picked this area this is where we had my baby response i don't know if something's taking my energy or what but maybe it will be able to interact with me if i go into a sort of sensory deprivation all right guys um amy's got the headphones friend on. Yeah, I'm a friend. Are you a friend of mine? Do you like me? He told me. What did he tell you? Can you tell me what happened in this area? Bed. Bed. Can you tell me what happened in this area of the hospital? Face down. I'll put my face down. Yes. Health. Are you talking about my health? Can you tell me what's wrong with you? Why are you in here? Assault. Were you injured from an assault? Go. Where would you like us to go in this hospital? 
Help. How can we help you? What can we do for you? We had someone looking for a baby earlier. Can you tell us about that? I don't... Guys, we've also got some cat balls and a REM pod on the floor over there. If you go, can you go and touch the, um, the devices we've left on the floor over there to let us know that you're here? Work. You worked here? So you weren't a patient then? Can you tell me what it's like? What, what can you see right now? Like what, what is it like on the other side? What, what is it like for you? What year is it? It's our time. <laughs> These Estes methods are getting better and better, I swear to God. It's your time, so you see... Brains. So you see your time, so are there patients around? Like, how many people are around here then? How many people are you seeing? That is so weird. One of Amy's subscribers asked us to ask questions about the other side. So that's what we've, we've been trying help. to... We've been trying to do in this episode. How can we help you? What can I do for you? I'm here for you. This isn't what I'm hearing, but I just feel like there's something around me and like really heavy. Like my head, I can't keep it up. It's being like pushed down. She did say face down before. How many of you are here right now? Three. <gasps> Three of you, okay. Can you tell me your names? Hey. Male. Are you doing something to my wife? Are you making a feel- Weightless. That's how she, she feels like she's heavy. Are you doing that to her? Are you making her feel this way? Help me. I'm trying to. If you can tell me more about your situation, I might be able to help you. I thought I heard a noise then. There's definite noises coming from behind Amy. He died here. Oh, shit. Can you tell me about how he died? This is getting really, really creepy. Here. Yeah. But how? Can you come and grab my hair? Show me that you're here. Warning. Should I be worried? Out now. I'm just gonna step out because I feel like someone does not want, want me here right now, so. Is this better? Police? Who was it that doesn't want me in that room and why don't you want me here? How do you feel about my wife being there in that room? Breathing. Doctor. Is there somewhere else you want me to go right now? That's Amy behind me. Nine. Nine? Are these num rooms numbered? Can you tell me, doctor, can you tell me why my wife is feeling like that? What's her diagnosis? I'm gonna leave Amy there for a second, just take you down some of these corridors here. Might be the end. The end of what? Can you tell me where I'm going? I cannot see a thing here except through the viewfinder of this camera. Can you tell me what this room was used for? I'm coming back in, is that okay? Don't care. You don't care? Okay. I'm just gonna come back in. I'm gonna take that as a positive sign. Let's sit back down. Oh. He's uh. back. <laughs> I am, yes. That was really good. Are you okay with me being back? Ronnie? Ronnie? Are you a Dr. Ronnie or a patient? You again. Yeah, I'm back. Is that okay? 
Can you make a noise for me in this room? Can you tap, tap or move something? I feel like I'm hearing like plastic wrapper rattling or something or scrunching. Hey, Mike. There's some noise again. <gasps> that came from behind, down the hallway. <gasps> Do you want me to go down there towards the noise? Don't. Responsible. Should I go down there? I feel like it's telling me not to go down there. You right? What's wrong? I just don't feel good. That was like a really, really good session. Was it? Um, I feel like there was a lot of different voices. And I just, as soon as I started that, I just felt like really heavy, like someone was pushing my head down like that. And my neck is sore now from that whole session. My knees are sore as well. Yeah, I like, like came back to the room and you were like this. I feel really uncomfortable. And I, as I said, like I'm just drained. I feel like crap. Before today, I've been feeling fine. It's literally been once we've entered this building, I've just been deteriorating and now I feel really off. There's something about this place. Our Ghost Tube SLS camera, which was left in the downstairs basement level, would document two noises of interest during this time. Strangely, my phone would also turn itself off during this recording session, and when I went down to retrieve it, I was unable to turn it back on, leading me to believe its battery had gone flat, which was also strange considering my phone was fully charged earlier and normally runs for much longer than this. I would later discover after leaving the hospital for the night that my phone was now able to be turned back on and was not drained of battery at all, something I am unable to explain. Now, since I was feeling incredibly drained, just like my phone's battery, Jared left me alone with the REM pod and cat balls while he ventured up to the fourth floor alone to conduct an EVP session. If anyone can hear me, I'm heading up to the fourth floor alone. More than welcome to come join me. Alright guys, so I'm now on the fourth floor on my own. I've sort of left Amy downstairs because she's feeling like shit for some reason. I figured we'll just come up here and explore for a bit. What I'm going to be trying to listen for is voices and sounds because apparently a lot of that happens here. We might even do an EVP session. If there's any staff here. Oh, look at that. These handprints are freaky. Jared eventually settled into the area we believe that was used for live viewing of operations to perform his EVP, which provided some curious results. So my name is Jared and um, I just want to know if there's anyone here that wants to communicate. Maybe you could tell me your name or tell me what happened in this room. Can you tell me what you're seeing right now? What does this place look like to you? Can you tell me anything else about yourself? Or scream as loud as you can to let me know that you're here. So my name is Jared and um, I just want to know if there's anyone here that wants to communicate. Maybe you could tell me your name or tell me what happened in this room. A whistle. Okay, there's dogs barking and there's a car in the distance. That I can hear, but I just heard a whistle and it sounds like it's coming from in here. 
No other EVPs were documented by Jared, and besides a very few faint taps, nothing of interest was documented around myself on the lower floor. For me, the strangest thing about this night was the deterioration of how I was feeling and my complete loss of energy. What surprised me the most, though, was shortly after leaving the hospital building, I began to feel much better, almost as if the building had drained energy from me, which returned after I had left. In an eerily similar fashion to my phone, which died within the building, only to spontaneously begin to work once it was removed from her walls. Standing in a small town just outside of San Antonio, Texas is the Yorktown Memorial Hospital, an abandoned building that is claimed by many to be one of the most haunted places in America. Built in 1951, it was run by the Felician Sisters, a branch of the Roman Catholic Church. The hospital would close in 1986, being repurposed as a drug rehabilitation facility until being completely decommissioned in 1992. Though built to help people and save lives, the hospital sparked a reputation as having done the opposite, with local rumours of malpractice and even murder plaguing its operational years, only to follow with more dark energy once being repurposed. As far as paranormal reports go, there are countless, with many citing this to be the most haunted place in all of Texas. Seeing apparitions is common, ranging from nuns and priests to children and shadow people, but capturing them onto camera has also occurred. After our visit, investigators looked back at photos they took. One investigator caught this in a hallway. She says she was alone in. It appears to be the full body apparition of a man and a woman. Visitors have heard noises that seem to indicate intelligent hauntings, though perhaps even residual activity dating back to the building's medical past. Footsteps have been documented, voices, aggressive EVPs, and sometimes even the eerie sound of children's toys. One of the first rooms we came across was filled with all kinds of toys and dolls. As we walked away from the room, one of the dolls started talking. Oh. That thing is talking. Oh my god. Stories of a murderous love triangle center around the basement's boiler room also exist. Allegedly, a nurse and a patient, though some retellings vary, became romantically involved in a secret love affair. And when this cheating was discovered by the nurse's boyfriend in the secrecy of the basement, he stabbed both the nurse, her lover, and then himself. The blood splatters of this horrific crime are said to still be etched onto the walls of the Yorktown Memorial Hospital. Maybe this crime is the reason for the black mists, temperature drops and feelings of being watched that seem to plague the basement. Yet another room beneath the hospital is also quite active, with many claiming to capture aggressive activity within the former priest's room. Upstairs on the top level of the building is the former nun's quarters, where sightings are again common, but voices, singing and playful behaviour from children has also occurred. But perhaps the darkest of all places within the building is its church. A malevolent presence has been reported here, manifesting as a dark shadow standing tall amongst the pews, attacking some who enter, and claimed by many to be truly demonic. In fact, we were told that the current caretaker can no longer visit the hospital due to this entity and repeated attachments from it, even reportedly being possessed. I'd like to warn you now, what we would uncover at the Yorktown Memorial Hospital was truly terrifying, but if you're ready to explore this extremely haunted place with us, hit like, subscribe, and let's jump into the investigation. It is night time, we're already inside Yorktown Memorial Hospital, and f me. This has been one of the weirdest beginnings to an investigation ever. From the moment that we rocked up here, I've been spooked out. Today I get here, there's freaking vultures or buzzards, whatever, on top of the haunted hospital. And y'all know I am so scared of birds, I literally have a bird phobia. I don't know if that's an omen or a symbol of death or what. What's gonna happen tonight petrified me. Jared and I both have mad anxiety over this one. How are you feeling, Jared? I've had like nervous poo all afternoon for some reason. Yeah, just anxious, like when you've had like three or four cups of coffee or something like that. We've just walked in with our guy we've only really hung around on this floor and I can just tell this place looks like it's gonna have bats which freaks me out even more he said there was no bats but you guys will see it looks like it's got bats 
We couldn't actually interview him for, I guess, paranormal reasons. And he was sharing a lot of stories about this place and how it affected his wife very personally to the point where he had to step in and become a tour guide to, I guess, replace her. She was getting routinely attacked in here, even had some kind of, I guess, possession or attachment. He said that there was some kind of entity still inside her even after leaving the hospital. So she can't really come back here. Anyway, let's just begin the walkthrough. I've got ghost tube rolling and here we go. Ooh, I like this chair. It's only the first room as well. I've already found something I like. It reminds me of the Matrix chair. So I think all of these are just office rooms, right? This is super eerie. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a feeling in here, isn't there? My name is Amy and I'm visiting tonight with Jared and we call out to the spirits of the hospital here. Please don't be shy tonight. You can come up to my hands at any time and maybe you can communicate with us. Which way should we go? All right, let's do a quick poll. Shall we turn left and go down that dark creepy corridor? Turn right and go down that creepy, down that creepy corridor where I just heard something by the way. Or go straight into the chapel. Where do you think we're gonna go? Or the exit and just go home now. <laughs> I'm gonna say this way. Okay, so it's going right. Who guessed it right? Spell. <gasps> spell. Spell. They just said spell. I know they said that there was some kind of satanic weird stuff going on in the basement. Blood sacrifices, we were told. I don't know how they know that or what the truth is behind that, but spell. What kind of spells occurred here? Each room, oh my god, oh my god, a wheelchair even. Can you make a noise to lead us where you want us to go? I'm hearing squeaking and like lots of drips. That's the footstep sounds. You can hear that, right? I just heard someone yelling. This way. I know people hear babies crying, people crying, moaning in pain. I just heard like a dude like, Bleh! like screaming. I was hearing footsteps upstairs. I didn't hear the footsteps, I heard screaming. A hand on heart? I did not hear any footsteps. I heard the footsteps, same, so it's footsteps upstairs. Who's in here? <gasps> what? What is a strip to my head? How do I use it? Look, you just need to come up to these lights in my hand, use your energy. Just try. It can't hurt you. I'm legitimately worried because I did hear footsteps upstairs. I know we're looking for ghosts, but I'm also like, we've got lots of equipment. <laughs> Generally, I heard footsteps upstairs, so I'm like, let's just keep going. Maybe it was paranormal, I don't know. If it was, it was pretty good. Well, here's the thing, like, we didn't go upstairs, we didn't go downstairs. We just walked in, our guide showed us around this floor and kind of just pointed where things would be up or down. So we don't actually, I assume we're alone in the building, but I don't actually know. I didn't hear the footsteps, so either is the other thing. Where should we go? Where are you? Are you all right? Yeah. What? There's nothing, I'm just actually freaked out about this one. I don't really feel comfortable here. Yeah, I don't like it in here. It's, uh, uh, yeah. Hello? Anyone down here? I know this is the pediatric space. So women, children, Anyone want to be friends and play? <gasps> that fan is blowing in the wind, I think. That could fall out the ceiling any second. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hang around in there. I'm lost. <gasps> You're lost? 
Well, I'm Amy, this is Jared. We'd love to try to help you. What are you looking for? Maybe I can help you. Garden. Looking, looking for, the for the garden. garden. Was there a garden here? Maybe there was back in the day. It was run by <gasps> priests and nuns. That was the bed. That was the bed. The metal bed. Yeah, that just gives me vibes in there. Yeah, that's weird. I, I really don't feel comfortable here. This is, um, you know what, this is giving me Waverly Hills, whole vibes, this corridor even. I don't know, we're only on the first floor, we haven't even gone up or down yet. All right, chapel time. You know what, they say this is actually the worst place in the whole hospital. Hello? Any vibes? No. They say this is the, the worst, scariest, demonic area, shadow figure, very common, people getting attacked, taken over. Can we just listen for a moment in silence? Because I, I, I really was hearing like a male voice. <laughs> what? It's a fly flying at me. Oh, it's a bee. Ames, it's a bee. <laughs> I think it's a bee hive in here. What? Yeah, I'm not joking. Get out of there. I've got no light, Jared. Also, when you run around bees, it attracts them to you. Yeah, it's bees, Ames. Well, I can't see because you just ran away with the only light. <laughs> we can just stand here, Jared. It's fine. If there's a demon in here, I'm sure it can get us here. Do demons manifest into bees or what? Is there a demon here? <laughs> Do something other than bees to show us that you're here. At this point we wanted to split up and tackle the last part of our walkthrough solo, with myself exploring the basement and Jared exploring the upper level. However, Jared was adamant that he had heard human footsteps walking above us, something I did not hear in the moment and that was not documented onto our audio. So for safety's sake, I waited at the base of the staircase while Jared performed his solo, then we'd swap so he could do the same for me. Oh my god. Here I go. All right, I'm doing it for you guys. Rolling ghost tube now. Oh my God, this is actually really scary. Who's there? I can see you. Come on. So I'm alone in the chapel now, where they say that there's a demon. And I did have a light on, but now I've turned it off because a bee just like came in perfectly as I was standing in here. Maybe that's a way to get me into the dark though, but I'm just hanging out here, seeing if anything happens, if Jared's okay. As I feel like I'm Agent Mulder. Agent Mulder but I don't have my scully. <sighs> Bee just flew into my face. Bee just flew into my face. In this moment, unbeknownst to me, I picked up a possible EVP that very much sounds like a man screaming, kill me. This is something that I had no idea I had captured in the moment. <gasps> Just checking all these cupboards, guys, because I honestly, I really did hear something up here before. And there were some heavy footsteps. this bedroom. Okay guys, I think
think that's the hole upstairs and there's nobody up here. So I feel a little bit better. Now that I know a person didn't make that noise, can you tell me who did? Have you been following us around? Can you tell me who used to hang around in this room? Or can you tell me who's still here? Oh my God, those lights are moving. I swear they were just moving. Can you swing them real hard for me? So I don't know that you're here. What is that? So I don't know that you're here. Oh my God, that just, that just looks creepy. Stress. Yes, 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 I am feeling stressed. something down here. Hello? Ames? <gasps> Coming down. There's something down here. There's something down there. Is there? There's something dark with glowing eyes down there. And whilst you were upstairs, I was hearing loud movement like bangs and stuff. I didn't know if it was you though. Eventually, we were able to figure out what I had seen at the end of the corridor was actually the glowing eyes and body of a rather fat raccoon. And with that, it was my turn to explore alone, heading down into the basement. Rolling on ghost tube, and here we go down into the basement. Oh, f me. Guys, I don't feel any better being back down here. Everywhere I look, it's creepy. I can see a coffin through there. I'm pretty sure this is the freaking seance room. So I don't know the truth behind this, but I heard satanic rituals, seances were done down here. What the f man? Is this why they call it the seance room? Honestly, what is this? Leave a comment if you know. Is this part of why it's called the seance room? Is this some, I don't know what that is. Our guide said animal sacrifices, rituals, satanic kind of stuff down here. And then I find this. Oh, little noise in here. Not heavily reassuring. Okay guys, it is very freaky being even like on this floor as well, like just, being on your own in this place, just, it really gets to you. This is quickly becoming one of my least favorite haunts, I think. Hello? Oh, getting that creepy feeling like someone's around me. So somebody here. I actually think this is the boiler room. I just feel, guys, that like I've got to keep watching my back here. And down the end of that hall is where I heard the footsteps, but they were coming from upstairs. I have heard there's like blood still on the walls down here. I don't know exactly where, but that is such an eerie thought to think that there was a double murder suicide down here. I've heard of what happens down here and I'm really sorry that that happened to you. Is there anyone around that still wants to talk or communicate?
Is there really no one that wants to talk to me down here? Guys, right there is the chapel and I can just feel like a cold breeze coming out of it. I can hear people screaming in pain. <laughs> this is such a maze. That is so scary. I heard this was almost like a chill out tank for um, detoxing. Someone was misbehaving, so it's essentially a cell. Oh, I just feel like there's someone standing right behind me. I'm just gonna stand in the dark for you guys. I'm literally in the dark right now. something in here. Oh. Oh. <gasps> this is the priest's bedroom and I've heard this can be quite dark and malevolent. Is there a priest in here or anyone else? Bible. Are you f***ing me? No you did not. I just walk into the priest's bedroom and straight away Bible. Like something just touched my back. <laughs> Ames? Yeah. Oh, fuck, fuck. I swear something just touched my back. Why are you? I just felt like this get pulled or something. Move, move, move. Oh fuck. I've got goosebumps I don't too, look. See. I'm really oh, you do freaked too. out. <laughs> Hang on, stay still. Let me. Hang on, I'm trying to focus. Yeah, okay. We're not splitting up for the rest of this episode, are we? <laughs> <laughs> I want to do it again. It seemed as though there was some strong energy on the ground floor, so we decided to begin focusing our investigation here, starting with the darkest area of the entire hospital, its former chapel, where some believe a demonic entity lingers which has supposedly overtaken people in the past. To attempt to find the truth of this all, we'd ask questions while rolling Ghost Tube Fox. Hi right, guys, we don't normally do this on Amy's script. <laughs> But we've got rosary beads because you know what? It's been pretty freaky in here so far. I was actually gifted these by my uncle for protection. He watches my channel, so I have a pink one. <laughs> it's so I've cute. got, I think mine's glow in the dark, which is good because, yeah. Rolling on Vox. My name's Amy, this is Jared, and we want to know who you are. Is that something you can share with us? I can't show. I can't show. Can you can't show yourself to us? Can you make a noise for us then instead? It sounded like and felt like something came in just now. Oh, the wind just picked up. Yeah. Did something just come in here with us? <laughs> how there was how many? People are now in here with us. Stay away. Just said stay away. I've heard a lot of stories about this um, church here, that it's bad, there's something negative in here. 
Are you evil? Are you good? Are you misunderstood? <gasps> Something's over there. What the f was that? <gasps> <gasps> Can you tell us what we're hearing in this room with us? Do you know what these are in my hands? Her family died. Her family died. The family died? Her, Is that what you heard? Her family died. Her family died. Whose family died? Did I just say the organ? Oh. Did it? What about the organ? Close. Close. Close to the organ or is that where you are? I am. I am. Can you play the organ for us? It'd actually be scary if the organ played because I tested it earlier today and it doesn't work. That was a woman. Are you okay? Can we help you? Tell me how. By this point, we'd had some interesting captures, but it was about to take a much darker turn, starting with one response that occurred as we were readjusting my camera rig, which had become too heavy to hold. I really need to take this light off. Yeah, way too heavy. Kim, can you hold it? I do. <gasps> behind me! What? What's behind us? Oh my god, I dropped my rosary beads. I dropped my rosary beads. Fuck. Just said behind to you. What's behind us? Peel. Maybe pew? Pew. What's behind us? Can you tell us, please? <gasps> oh, that just said leave. What did it say, me? Either way, that's f***ing scary. Just how it was said. All right, if you're a demon, prove it. Say something that will freak us out. Just did. I could be a bit more freaked out, I guess. <laughs> Come on. Oh, the wind's just picked up. Oh my god. The wind's just picked up in here. Nothing. Tell us why you're here. If you're unholy or evil or what people say, why are you in the, the church or the chapel? Come on, if you're bad and you want to keep us around to do something, you have to say something to us. Or make one of those lights flash. You just need to go up to it. If I would visit. If I would visit. I thought it said you play with this. You can play with this. Yeah, go on. You can talk through it. Are you from the hospital or somewhere else? Tell us where you're from. I mean, uh, this is... Who is it? This is... We want to know what this is. Is this you? What are you? I don't know if this is a trick of the eyes, but I thought I just seen a big shadow over here. That way, like on the wall behind that camera. I look like a super tall dude, like a shadow, large shadow. But he was in. He was in. We're gonna say a prayer. How do you feel about that? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Feeling like something dark in here. Doesn't feel good. What am I holding here? Does this frighten you? Yes. Yes. That was like a nice woman's voice, so like, yes. Like pleasant. Tell us why. Yes, he. Cause he, cause he what? What does he do? Yes. I just realized I'm holding my cross upside down. <laughs> Please, Amy. <laughs> Nothing sorry. that can attract something negative here, please. I didn't mean to. Sid, how about... All right, negative entity, come forward. Oh my God, this is too creepy, Ames. What's you? Righteous. What's your purpose? He 
Here, as we had been reaching out for some time, we decided to cut and move on. But just as I cut recording on Vox, one last response was captured, which mentioned God. Cut? Yeah. And God. <gasps> that just said, and God? And God. I just heard it say, and God, as we were about it to just wrap up. cut, and yeah, it said something like, and God. And God. Because of this final response, we spent a little more time in the church but did not receive anything further. So we decided to head upstairs to continue investigating. And right from the get-go, we documented something strange on our thermal camera. Looks like there's someone at the end too, in the doorway. Come look at this. Are you rolling? Yeah, it's rolling. It looks like there's a person there. In the doorway, you see it? Yep. <gasps> well, I'm rolling on everything because... So rolling, rolling, rolling. Jared and I are now upstairs on the second floor where nuns are commonly sighted. They have been sighted with children. We have a few things running. We're using ghost tube SLS to look for figures. We have a thermal camera running, which looked like it just picked up a figure at the end of the hallway. We have the EMF trip wire. Jared's also wearing lucid headphones. So he's actually listening to the environment right now, but amplified. As you were saying, the Ames, I was getting some like weird noises come through here, static -y noises. Ghost tube SLS to look for figures. We have a thermal camera running, which looks like. If there's someone up here, can you show yourself to us? Or maybe you can say something? We might be able to hear you. This is the room where I got a word on ghost tube earlier. What was the word? Stressed. By the way, guys, this is what Amy looks like on the SLS LiDAR. So we're actually using LiDAR, so it's measuring depth. I didn't do an SLS dance. SLS dance. So I was in here earlier and the word stressed came through. I was feeling not great at the time. Was there someone here with me then? Can you speak to me now? What was that? I reckon there might be a loose window here. Yeah. Okay. Look, look guys, there's plastic here. I felt particularly uncomfortable here earlier by this table and I swear the light shade was moving. Could have been a breeze. Was there someone here with me? What happens at this table? Just heard a voice. Are there still nuns here? Do you have something to say? We'd love to know why you're still here. I just heard squeaking. Same. I have no idea what that I was could hearing be. squeaking noise earlier. We're gonna walk down this corridor. Can you whisper to me when we get to a room you want us to go into, perhaps? Maybe there's children up here as well. You don't need to be afraid of us. We've also put some pretty lights down the hallway and maybe you can play with them. Just go up close to them and they'll change colour for you. Anyone down here? Can you give us a sign? So when we were standing down the far end of the hall, looking at the thermal, it looked like someone was standing in this doorway. It really did and then it all went dark. Is there someone here with us now? Ooh, feel that wind? Just gust, that gust of wind just came in. That's freaky. It's freaky, but I mean, there's no glass in that window, so. Can you tell us who's here with us? Here, just as we asked for interaction, I noticed our thermal signatures on our flare camera suddenly disappeared for some time, before flashing back into place. I have no idea if this was a glitch of the camera, or if something larger with no heat signature possibly blocked our own from view of the camera for a moment. Although this might not be paranormal, I thought it was still worth noting in case anyone here has some insight as to why this would happen. What's your opinion? And 
there's a man standing in this hallway and he would absolutely love to talk to you. Can you go up towards him for me? Maybe you can grab his hand. Maybe you can say something to him. <gasps> Someone was sitting at the table there. Someone was just sitting the at the table. Quick, 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 quick. I'm gonna come sit at the table with you. Can you whisper to me who's here? What was that? It's the window okay. again. Can you tell me about this place? Me and Amy were just standing out there by that tripod out there and something appeared here and it hasn't triggered this whole time. We just had EMF in the hallway. I just sent it out the corner of my eye. Are you here with us now? This is the room where I felt uncomfortable earlier as well. Can you come in this room with us if you're in the hallway? We're not afraid of you. We won't hurt you. I just heard a male voice. Very distant, couldn't make it out. What's very cool is I did not hear a male voice. Jared is wearing the lucid headphones that amplify noise all around us. And just to make sure it's not a false positive. Yeah, it's not going off now. That was a pretty compelling one because I haven't been able to replicate it. Can you tell us who was sitting at the table earlier, please? At this point, we decided to switch things up with the lucid headphones to see if we'd get any different responses. All right, spirits, talk to me. I would love to hear you. That came from down there. Okay, I definitely heard that. I could hear the tapping, but I know that that's that window. I can actually hear like a truck reversing or something. Does it help if I get down like this and touch my hand? Can you run towards me down the hallway? I just heard a lady. Can you say something else, please? Sister, are you here, sister? This moment is pretty curious. I believe I heard a woman's voice talking through the lucid headphones, which Jared did not hear with his naked ear. This could be like hearing an EVP live in the moment. However, the lucid headphones only recorded some strange interference at the exact time I had heard this voice. No, I didn't hear a woman. I didn't hear anything. That's cool then, because I definitely heard a woman as I was walking. Can I just say, I had like different feelings up here at this time. I don't know if it's because you were with me, but last time I was up here, it felt very unnerving and very uncomfortable. So I don't know if it's maybe I was just more on edge before because I was on my own or maybe a female presence up here. I don't know. Yeah, this is a place where the nuns are always seen or said to still hang around. This was their quarters, right? So maybe it does make a difference, just the gender balance up here, I don't know. Since things now seem pretty quiet on the upper floors, we decided to venture down into the basement to continue our investigation. Before reaching out, we set up a ghost tube SLS camera in the hallway to monitor the space for sounds and figures. While we ventured into the priest's former bedroom, which is said to be particularly active and where I got an extremely relevant ghost tube response, Response earlier during my solo walkthrough. Is there a priest in here or anyone else? Bible. Are you f***ing me? No, you did not. 
Here, we were trying to experiment at Jewel Estes and C Session utilizing Ghost 2 Blends, which are now available for purchase and linked below. This saw me wear noise cancelling headphones while blindfolded and listening to a spirit box while relaying anything I heard come through, while Jared asked questions I could not hear. Additionally, Jared would wear Ghost 2 Blends while digitally scrying white noise, with the potential for images to be created by AI via environmental readings. New experiment time! We have never done this before. I'm a little bit nervous because neither of us are going to be able to see. I can't see. Well, not in the real world anyway. <laughs> Tell me when you're ready. Oh, hang on. Um, I'm going under now. Killed. Killed. Who was killed? In tandem. Two people were killed. It's always difficult to say what interactions could mean, and it was very interesting to receive such responses immediately. But could this have been related to the supposed double murder-suicide that occurred in the basement spoiler room? That's Amy, I'm Jared. Can you tell us your name? Evil. What's evil? Can't hear. If you got the device in her hand or on my head, you might be able to interact with us in some way. Some meaningful way, anyway. Like... Are you showing me? I'm seeing a <gasps> piano. What about the piano? Can you tell me about the piano? There's two pianos upstairs. This first image was quite intriguing as there are two pianos sitting within the hospital, one in the chapel and one in the front waiting room of the building just as you walk through its main doors. Yes, ma'am. I'm not a ma'am. Well, you can call me ma'am if you want. Did you play the piano? Thank you. You're welcome, I guess. Tell me about this room. I'm here and I'm invisible. In front. Whoa. That's weird. You're in front of who? Her or me? Can you show me where you are? Look at us. Neither of us can see, so we can't see you right now. So you'd have to communicate through her or play with this device and it might generate some images that you can use to communicate. Can you tell me how old you are or how many people are here with us? It's in the book. Which book? Where's the book? Where can I find it? <gasps> Got a picture. Oh, I can see a... A young child walking towards light. Maybe in a street? Can you tell it's me about... It's bright. It, yeah, yes, it's bright, yes. Can you tell me about the child? Who is that? What are they doing? That is crazy so I'm seeing like bright light guys and she just said it's bright so that's pretty maybe that is relevant 10 she's 10 years old maybe she could be <sighs> I don't know if you're just moving around Jared but I can feel the bed moving I don't think I was moving that much can you tell me your name show us one I would like you to show us Patient. We've, we're here all night, so we can we can be as patient as Ascend. you need. Ascend. Maybe they meant they were patient. Can you tell me about the dark entities in this place? Or better yet, can you show me? Look. I'm looking. There. Yeah. Can you show me? I've got cold chills. That's just not what I'm hearing. I'm seeing an image of a doorway. Can you tell me where this is? A doorway with a light at the end of it. Oh, sorry, with a door at the end of it. That's a hallway with a door at the end with the light coming through. Can you tell me where that is? Is it Come in this... over here. Yeah, can you tell me where in this building it is? Where can I find this doorway? We're not allowed. Why? What's down there? Tell me, please. One of them's feral. This interaction is very compelling to me. Right after Jared asks about the dark entities, he is told to look there. Can you tell me about the dark entities in this place? Look. I'm looking. There. Yeah. And then after asking if they could show him, he is shown a scene that looks like a derelict hallway, such as in this very hospital. And then he is told to come over here. Can you tell me where that is? Is it Come in over here. As if to say, this is where you can find the dark entities of this location. But things only get increasingly strange from here. Can you tell me about what your job was here? Or what your job is here? Why, like, why are you here? I didn't want to. Why? I'm seeing another tunnel with light. I'm seeing a lot of these, these lights. Similar colours as well. No I, face. I feel like this is underground. 
Can you tell me where I am right now? Or what I'm seeing? It's what I see. Wow. It actually looks like a corridor and maybe all the walls are stripped and you can just see the, the inside. Sort of looks like the, um, the tunnel where we've got the SLS camera set up actually. It's the bad place. What happens down there? To get away. And I heard someone say sedatives as well. Sedatives? W warm? I'm actually a bit cool down here. I'm not warm. Is that how you're feeling maybe? I'm seeing again another bright window with just... Dirty? Like a corridor and a floor. The floor actually looks maybe like it's wet. I feel like maybe we're underground again still. I'm feeling very uncomfortable, Jared. I don't know, it's like in my back's hurting, my lower back. Are you touching her? Do you want her to leave? I want to see the priest. I want to talk to the priest. I'm, I do actually just did, did just get goosebumps then. 40. Bibles. Oh my God. I'm seeing a man with headphones on and weird goggles or like a, could be binoculars, but it's weird because Amy's wearing headphones, I'm wearing goggles. Is this you trying to show us that you can see us? It looks like he's wearing a suit though. I'm not wearing a suit. Oh my God, could that be a priest suit? Is it like the priest looking back at us? Like he's got no hair though. He's bald. This again was another interesting interaction. Just as the word Bible comes through for the second time tonight, we receive an image that almost looks like it could be a priest, but also like someone wearing some kind of device on their ears and eyes. We're not sure if this could indicate a priest or perhaps a spirit trying to portray our own attempt at communication, given what we were wearing at the time. Either way, it is interesting that the AI would depict an image like this. That was really weird. You're not alone. Oh my god, I just got goosebumps. Oh my god, are you here with us? So weird, I've got a weird, I don't know if it's because of the way I'm sitting, but I've got a weird pain in my back now this too. This one. Can you describe where you would like us to go? <gasps> seeing a little girl. Who's this I'm looking at? Steph, maybe? Steph? Five. What would you like me to do? You. Yeah, what would you like me to do? I'll do anything you tell me to. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that actually. Within reason. I'll do anything you want me to do within reason. Free me. What do you need to be freed from? How can I help? What can I do? Seeing like a black bird flying through a graveyard. What was the meaning behind the bird in the graveyard? Like what, what does that mean? Are you at Ames? Jared, I feel like I'm not like hearing anything anymore. Oh. My back is so sore. Oh, mine too, actually. Oh. I don't want to say it's paranormal, but like it was just like my entire back, my lower back is like on fire. Can I just check that? Really uncomfortable. After reviewing the images we had just received, we decided to move back up to the ground level. Here, we set up a still ghost tube SLS camera within the church to monitor for sounds and figures while we worked down the hallway, conducting an EVP session to try and capture potential communication. Rolling EVP session in paediatric unit. My name is Amy, I'm here tonight with Jared. If there is anyone here, could you please speak your name to us? Can you tell us whether you're a patient or whether you work here? And if you do work here, what was your occupation? Are we in danger here? I heard that there's something dark that lingers here. How many patients can this hospital hold? Can you give me a diagnosis, please? Do 
tagging the wind just picked up and I heard a noise behind us. Is there someone here with us now? Did you just hear that? Yeah. Can you tell us what room that noise was in? It was like a loud doof. Rolling EVP session in paediatric unit. My name is Amy, I'm here tonight with Jared. If there is anyone here, could you please speak your name to us? How many patients can this hospital hold? the wind just picked up and I heard a noise behind us. Is there someone here with us now? We listened to the remainder of our EVP recording and continued reaching out for some time, but the only thing we picked up of any interest was a very slight change in the infrared light on our camera positioned at the end of the hallway. Other than this, it seemed the hospital had gone quiet for the night. This was such a stark contrast to how we began our investigation. On edge and scared to the point that Jared was physically shaking. <sighs> I feel like something just touched my back. Now, silence. Yet that's often how things go. But we do hope that you enjoyed our investigation of the Haunted Yorktown Memorial Hospital. And if you'd like to see other epic paranormal videos from haunted places all over the world, hit subscribe now and turn on all notifications for this channel because you won't want to miss what we have coming up from haunted prisons, demon infested houses, and frightening asylums. There's some crazy exciting things in the works for Amy's Crypt.